uh, software engineers working for Red Hat. Our office in Israel is located in Ranana. We have about uh, 200 employees there, right? around 200. Um, I work on the Foreman project, Freddie works on the Over project, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we're going to talk to you about bringing people together with Python and open source. Our office has been doing just that for the past four years with a great educational pro program called ROSE. ROSE, Red Hat Open Source Education, is a course we give to ninth graders, 12 kids, six of them Jewish kids from the city of Ranana, six of them Arab kids from the city of Tira. They come together for 14 weeks in our office and mainly learn Python. There are two main goals to this project. The first one is collaboration between the cities of Ranana and Tira. These kids that normally wouldn't meet come every week and work with each other in our office. Um, as a result, later on, their parents and teachers meet and the principal and, the, and even the mayors of the two city meet at their graduation ceremony. This has been going on for four years. There has been three courses and each time everyone comes together. The second goal is exposing kids to code and to open source. These kids, like I said, are ninth graders. Ne next year they all start high school and they need to choose what they're going to learn and what that may affect what they will do uh, later on in life. Some of them want to code, they hear it's a good job, it pays well, but not all of them actually have ever been exposed to code. Not all of them know what that means and what that includes. And here they come, they see, they try out code, they see what they like, they get exposed to this world. Also, the open source world gives them a great platform to start with. They have a supporting community to help them when they're at their beginning and learning. And they actually get a head start before the rest of their, the kids starting high school with le sometimes less knowledge than what they get in the course. So, the course structure. Um, well, I said we have 12 kids. But originally, each of the schools sends 12 kids, and we have to choose six. How do we do that? We have a screening exam to choose the kids. This year, it was through an app called Lightbot. They have this nice character, looks like a light bulb, and it's basically a game, and they have to give it uh, code instructions. So they give the instructions, so the little, little character in the game goes forward. Each level, it gets more and more complicated. The kids really like this, because after all, it's a game, and they took a test on their phones. Later on, when they start, once we choose which kids, we give them laptops. We give them laptops for the entire course. They can take their laptops home. They get laptops with Fedora on it. That means for the first two weeks in the course, they actually learn Linux and a little about the open source world, since most of them have never seen Linux before and need to know how to use their laptops. The reason we do this is to allow each child, no matter where he comes from, and if he actually has a laptop at home, if he can bring him his laptop, um, whatever, it doesn't matter, he can participate because we give him everything he needs. And of course I said, they get homework. They have to do their homework every week at home, and they have this laptop where they have everything they did in class and they can continue with it. After the Linux lessons, the rest of the course is actually Python lessons. When about once a month we have a fun activity, again to do this collaboration between the kids. Our lessons are not a normal school lessons, we have interaction lessons. That means half of the, the class is actually a lecture, and then they have practice time. So this is a typical session where you can see they're all sitting, they have the laptops through the session so they can follow what we do and they actually code during the session. Our course is very diverse. Like I said, we have six kids from Ranana, six kids from Tira. The difference is not only the city they live in. They come from a different culture. They come from a different background. They are from a different religion. They usually speak a different language during their day to day and the level of coding. 
Um, we have kids who never saw code in their life. We had one kid who actually already had his own projects on GitHub. Everyone in the middle uh, was in the middle. So, <laughs> yeah. Red Hat supports diversity, um, and you can see that in projects like Rose and also in projects around the world that Red Hat uh, does in different places. There was this year a project in Boston called CoLabs where they took middle, middle school girls, only girls, from unprivileged schools and they taught them to code on a Raspberry Pi, turn it into a camera and go take pictures around Boston. These are girls that probably would have never done this in any way during their school and any other activity related. So I said girls. We also had two girls in this course. We would have wanted to have more. The course before that, we had almost half girls. There were five girls out of the 12 kids. Here, we only had two girls. But those girls felt the need to actually uh, prove themselves. And they were very motivated. At the end of the course, there's a race that the kids have to write the car for the race. Freddie will talk about it soon. And we have a competition between everyone. Those two girls were placed two and three out of all of the 12 kids. With all the differences between the kids, there are still some things that are the same. They're all 13, 14 year olds. And this causes the fact that when you could see in breaks, when they talk to each other, that they saw how much they were alike. They have pretty much the same schedule. They have school in the morning. They have some kind of after school stuff, hobbies, sports. We heard conversations about PlayStations. This is pretty amazing to see these kids that are so different that barely speak the same language at the beginning talk during the breaks and see that they're actually the same thing, the same kids, the same interests. Although these differences do come with a little obstacles on our side. The first is the language barrier. The kids from Tira came and we talked to them, looked like they speak pretty good Hebrew. But then during the lessons, sometimes they would miss a word here or a word there and that could make them miss the whole context. And we also noticed they were a little shy and they didn't always ask what they missed, especially if it had to do with language. Because of that, we were ready and had two mentors who were native Arabic speakers that came through the to the lessons and helped out the kids. Tarek, who is here, and Al, I think, isn't here today, um, but also stepped up and came and talked to the kids. We also broke up the sessions into four parts. They had half a lecture, then practice, the other half, and more practice. That means during both parts of the practice, they could actually ask the mentor, catch up, and then for the second half, they already could continue with the, the lesson and didn't just drift off because they missed part of it and couldn't come back to the rest of the class. The level of coding I already talked about, it made us a little creative um, to kind of keep the stronger kids engaged while still keeping the level of the whole class at the same thing. And Sasha here, which was one of our mentors, actually came up for, uh, with uh, riddles in Python for the kid with the GitHub project. So he had something to do while we were boring him half of the class. Another thing is these are two different schools and two different religions. The holidays didn't always collide. And of course, the school had school trips and tests and other things, a bunch of homeworks that wasn't at the same time. That turned 14 weeks into closer to five months. And I keep on saying kids, but these are teenagers. To anyone here that has teenagers, you understand how nice it is to give them homework every week uh, in addition to their normal schoolwork. And of course, they, well, the phone issue, getting them to listen with phones is... Uh, kind of challenging. With this, we had to actually take away their phone for the few couple of lessons to get them to listen throughout the lesson. But we got a great group of kids. The school sent us motivated kids. They did do our home their homework. It took a little work, but they did their homework and they um, did participate 
And eventually we noticed that they were looking less and less for their phones and actually joining the session. And the, f the fact that the session was interactive, I think, pretty much helped this. Actually, at their graduation, one of the moms came over and said, you know, this is the most I've ever seen him do his homework. <laughs> he like, comes home and does his homework right away. So we feel like we inspired these kids. The two girls that I talked about, they also joined us this Sunday for the Django Girls workshop we had in our office. They wanted to join because they wanted to do more and learn more. One of their mothers told me in the graduation that uh, her daughter has already decided to learn computers while she's in high school. And at the end of the um, workshop on Sunday, they came over to me and said, what's next? Are you doing another course? Can we join something else? What can we do by ourselves? We want more. That's pretty amazing. So I talked about some of the difficulties we had. Now, Freddie here will talk about what worked. Okay. Thank you, Ori. So we are trying to learn from our experience. Every year we are trying to think, make things uh, better. And here are some of the lessons that we learned from the last iteration. One of the first things that we have done this year is to separate the kids into pairs, one from each school. As we mentioned earlier, uh, one of the goals of this project is to have the kids to communicate with each other. And that way we encourage them to, to talk and ask each other questions. We kept the same pair along all the course and eventually at the end they even compete one with each other on a competition that we'll talk about in a few minutes. And uh, it really worked. So then talk to each other to communicate we definitely were going to do the same thing uh, on the next year. We also have a WhatsApp group for communication uh, with all the kids, all the mentors, even some parents were there. And in order to make everybody comfortable, we told them to they can ask any question at any time, and of course in any language. And uh, we made sure that we had someone uh, able to answer them as quickly as possible. We already mentioned the issue with, uh, with, with the language. It is uh, a very big issue here. Last year, we had only one uh, mentor from Red Hat who were available. And sometimes when he was not there, it was very hard for the kids. So this year, we had uh, the chance to have two mentors. It really makes a difference. We also had the opportunity to have a teacher and a parent from TIA on the first two meetings. And again, it is uh, making the kids a lot more comfortable. And I hope that we'll be able also to continue next year uh, with the same thing. We noticed that the kids are really motivated uh, by competition. So uh, in addition to the big one that we have at the end, we decided as part of our fun activity to have our competition. You can see that uh, when they're working together, they are more motivated, more cooperating, and also have some swag at the end of spice. We can make the difference. Everybody loves swag, right? OK, so uh, we are teaching Python. And we are in Python, of course, so let's talk a little bit about Python, why Python. Uh, one of the first things that we are, when you are working with teenagers is uh, they want fast results. Uh, they don't want to get bored, so we need to, uh, to have uh, immediate uh, feedback on what they are doing. And the Python shell is just great for that. If you have been to David's uh, keynote yesterday, he said it was playful, so it is exactly what it is. We told them just do one plus one and see what's happening, getting something, then do another arithmetical operation, getting results, and then we go to the hello world example, of course. And again, without any frustration, they are getting something, and they are getting motivated, and they want to learn more. As you know, for example, in Java, in order to get to the hello world example, you need to create a file, then declare a class, then create a static method, then call some system object, much more complex. So Python has a great first experience, and it is very, very important when you're working with the kids. Uh, for coding to Python, you don't need any special idea. You can do any text editor. The idea behind that is that we want the kids to continue after the course. We are taking by the laptop, and we want them to have uh, easily continue coding on the desktop, uh, at their home, maybe some Windows, whatever they have, and without having to have a special idea or some fancy setup, just a simple text editor as they can continue coding. And uh, the idea is that, again, easily uh, have the ability to continue. So uh, community, Python community is very welcoming. It's very supportive for newcomers. A lot of uh, meetups, like the Django God we mentioned, a lot of online tutorials. I think it's a great place to be. Uh, 
And regarding uh, professional skills, uh, Python is a real world uh, uh, language. It's not like a scratch or a logo, which is very, it's very good for beginners, but it's very limited. The idea is that uh, from, th from this point, the student can easily go on to web development using Flask or Django, or even doing desktop game with spy game. So uh, it is very important to be a real world uh, language. So uh, we said kids, we said teenagers, we need to have them engaged, have them involved, we need to make it fun. And it starts, like uh, Ori mentioned, with having a, a different type of atmosphere, not a school-like atmosphere. Uh, we told them you can, you can talk to each other, you can make noise, you can speak, interact. It is the idea that it shouldn't be like ever silent. Look at each other code, it is open source world, we want to share. And uh, they really liked it. There was a good ratio between the mentors and the student. So we had the opportunity to have some uh, more close interaction, uh, interaction with them. So uh, this is a nice uh, idea that we had that it, it worked very well. Uh, we had some fun activity in the middle. I guess some of you know the marshmallow challenge. The idea is to build a structure from spaghettis and tape and thread or, and have a marshmallow on top of it. All of that in 19 minutes. It sounds easy, but it is not easy. <laughs> Eventually, only one group uh, succeeded in it when they come and put the marshmallow on the top, everything crashed. But uh, they were a mixed group, they were under pressure, under common goal, they cooperated. Really nice. Another activity that they had, we talked about them about binary numbers. It's a CS and plug activity, you can check it out, it's very nice. Then we talked about them about computer components, gave them a lot of old desktop, old, old laptops, a bunch of screwdrivers. I can, you can guess what happened next, it was a mess, yeah. <laughs> but they had fun, again, working together. I can see a kid from Tira and Kid Ranana working on the laptop, on the desktop. And I had to deal with a lot of leftover schools. I didn't know that even existed. Another activity that we had is a song recognition quiz. We asked them to send us uh, songs and we built a quiz from it. And again, the kids could see that there are differences between the culture, different songs, but they found some songs that everybody loves. I won't tell you what it is because <laughs> I don't like it. Anyway, and of course, we have the last competition about the car race. So what is this car race? This is an application. This is, of course, open source. It's on GitHub. You can look out, check out. Please contribute if you see something that you want to change. And so uh, a few engineers a few years ago just uh, take a break from their bugs, from the features, and they took some time. Sorry, they took some red at time to work on, the, on this project. They built a really nice uh, online game uh, using Twisted for communication, Pygame for, uh, the, the pie, uh, for the game parts. We had some really graphics, uh, for, uh, nice graphics for Meldan with the guys who made the PyCon logo and the website. And, and the kids love it. What they need to do is, it's a game, but there's no joystick, no keyboard. What do we do here? They need to code. And uh, in a few minutes, I will show you uh, what they need to do. So at the end, we had a big competition. The pairs were competing against each other. Uh, there is some randomness in the game, so we did uh, three iterations every time. Second round, semi-final, final. And you can see the kids are enjoying themselves. They are caring about what they are doing. And if you get to that point that the kids are caring, you already want them. They will, they will continue to look into it. They will continue to, to learn more. This is a girl that we talked about earlier. Okay, so let's see some code. I'm not doing, going to do any framework or any interpreter for some crazy language. Uh, this is what the kids are getting. An empty method, it's a drive method, they're getting an object, and they need to return an action. The action is actually what the car is going to do. Okay? So this is an example, it's a real example from a kid. Uh, this is an, uh, a simple implementation. Just look, uh, get from the world the location of the car, decide what is, look at what is the obstacle in front of him, and decide what is the best action for it. We have a more experienced kid, so he, he had some data structures, and he had some debug, uh, debug logs, he even had some sub-method sub, uh, to do the more uh, complex things, even catch exceptions. So there is a place for everybody. You can do a simple algorithm, and you can do a complex algorithm. If you want to get more points and chase the penguin, the penguin gets more bonus points, of course. There is a place for all of that. And the kids love it. And uh, I'm going to do something that my boss told me not to do. It's a live demo. <laughs> it's okay, so let's prove him wrong, right? Are you saying it? 
All right. <laughs> so, uh, game on. This is a cut from the two of the kids that were actually uh, in in the final. Uh, Ray White's a uh, girl from Tira, Idan uh, is a boy from Ranana. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you have the different kinds of obstacles, a barrier, a crack, a trash, and water. And according to the action, you can get some points. If you catch, of course, the Linux Penguin, you get even bonus point. And the kids love it because they can change easily the code and see how the care is behaving. Uh, the behavior can change according to what they've done. They are getting exceptions and need to understand what happened. Of course, if you look outside of the grid, you will get an exception. And there, there is place again for a very complex, uh, complex algorithm. Okay, so uh, you want to see who is winning? <laughs> yes, uh, you can also change the right of the of the of the of the race. But you, you see, in this case, it's very close, very um, more of the, more of the same uh, algorithm. All right, yeah, and the winner is. There you are, all right. So, uh, all right, please. We had a great final, actually, the most diverse uh, we could have hoped for. We had two boys from uh, Ranana and two girls from Tira as the finalist, the semi-final and eventually the final. So, it's already there. It's already there. Um, Okay, so I was a mentor and gave one of the lectures in this course, and Freddie was the head of the course. But of course, we weren't alone. This whole program who, that has been continuing for the past four years has a lot of people involved. I, there is no way I'll remember to say all of the names, um, but we would like to thank everyone for doing this. First of all, the head of the program itself, Eddie Masika, for keeping this alive. We have um, our HR, Anatan here, which uh, have somehow built the schedule with two schools and everything in the middle and all their tests. And I don't know how you got all those dates and did it. I have no idea. Our site manager, Miki, who gave us the space, the food, everything. And actually, our office managers, all of them that gave us the food and set up. Uh, IT, which gave us the laptops and helped with the screws after they were left from the activity. Um, we have, how many mentors? Yeah, mentors, Alex, Sasha, Tarek, and uh, Ala, I already mentioned them. Uh, Muli, Yaniv, who did I forget? Uh, Alex, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, many more people, a lot of engineers we have near here and Yaniv who worked on uh, writing the car race game. There are a lot of more engineers. Uh, and well, like I said, you can see some of the numbers. Uh, the schools, of course, the, the teachers, the parents that helped out, the principals, the mayors of the two cities, and of course the 12 kids that showed up, did their homework, participated, and had fun. So uh, yeah, there, are some links there are some links in the presentation if you want to the different projects we mentioned, uh, the race and the Red Hat projects, uh, and now questions. <laughs> The race itself is online, it's open source and you can take that and uh, you actually, you saw the code, they get the drive method, they have to write the car, you could use it in any schools or at home, whatever the kids want. Yeah, there are some samples there to how to start a basic uh, algorithm. The kid I mentioned before, that Sasha had to give riddles to get him to stay awake during the lessons. He, he, uh, we think he didn't actually get to the finals because he was so busy opening bugs and fixing them in the actual race. He didn't write the car all the way. Like he, he did write something, but he didn't. He um, used most of the time to fix our game and not to write the car, which is why his car didn't end up in the finals. If they ask us for help and materials, then I'm sure we'll be willing to help. Uh, but we're not planning to get to other schools and offices. And I think uh, <laughs> we need to. <laughs> so, okay, so guys, so like always, Red Hat is uh, 
is recruiting. So if we like to not only work, work on the world uh, leaders of open source, but also, also a company that is giving back to the community, you are welcome and talk to us at our stand. Thank you. Thank you.